Hi guys, happy well. Day 27 of the Aurora AKT 30 day challenge and the clinical question today. Hope you've had a good day or about to have a good day, depending on when you're watching this video. Hope preparation is still on track. That final push, remember, hopefully we're dragging you along to that final end point with these questions. Thanks for all the feedback that's been coming back. Hopefully today will be of some value as well. Let's jump straight into the question. 57 seconds as always. I'll pause, go quiet, have a think. Um, about the answer that you'd put in that pressurized situation of an exam. If you get down to two two um, two different answers, think about how can I make that difference to 51-49 rather than just a pure 50-50 guess because, as we always say, 50-50 guesses are too, too high risk in an exam like this. So I'll go silent. Let's start. There's time, guys. So, atrial fibrillation, one of those chronic conditions that, um, well, those conditions, certainly, that we say you need to know inside out when it comes to AKT. There are certain conditions that would be top of my list in terms of knowing details in terms of management, not just management, investigation, diagnosis, not just what we call line one management, which is kind of first treatment. Um, you know, that's AF, hypertension, um, diabetes, asthma, COPD, um, MI, angina, these kind of day-to-day -day chronic conditions that you may not see much of in general practice because they're um, cared for and managed long-term by other members of the primary care team, but things that you need to know off the top of your head for an exam like this. So a 53-year-old patient of yours has recently been started on first-line treatment for rate control of atrial fibrillation. So first-line treatment, rate control. Um, to differentiate it straight away. According to NICKS, which one of the first, which one of the blood options is least likely to have been prescribed as part of first line rate control management? So the one that um, you wouldn't use is D, of course, Sotolol, um, an example of a beta blocker, but not a beta blocker that's going to be used in primary care for rate control of AF. All the others can be. Um, metoprolol is an example of one of the beta blockers. There are several, etanolol, propranolol, metoprolol, there's quite a few. Digoxin can be used in certain situations, which we'll go through in a second. It doesn't give you any, any indication as to what situation. It just says which one is least likely to have been prescribed. Vrapamil and deltiazem, um, both examples of uh, calcium channel blockers that can be used as first-line rate control management, but NICIC is very clear that sotolol should not be used in primary care first line. So, atrial fibrillation, there's obviously lots to know with atrial fibrillation, um, but I thought I'd cover two key things here. So firstly, the three different types of atrial fibrillation because they can influence what you do in terms of management if you get a question on, on the different types. So three Ps, proxismal, persistent, and permanent. So proxismal AF is when you get those recurrent episodes, of course, but the episodes should not be longer than seven days. So between 30 seconds and seven days. Once you get to an episode that's gone beyond seven days, it's now termed persistent AF. And persistent AF is very different to permanent AF. Permanent AF is someone who you've tried to cardiovert back to normal, but they still remain in AF. So big difference between persistent and permanent. But the question here is talking about rate control management for AF. So generally, most people will have rate control management when it comes to atrial fibrillation, but there are certain caveats that you should spot in a question that tell you that, okay, this is not a rate control um, it's not like that rate control is first line here. It would be rhythm control. So, for example, if someone's had new onset AF, usually thought about of um, as less than 48-hour onset, those are the reversible cause that might have triggered the AF, so um, chest infection, UTI, something like that, or anything to do with heart failure. So 
um, heart failure that's pre-existing, heart failure that's caused by AF, heart failure that's worsened by AF. Um, for those situations, you might think about rhythm control. But if you're going to go for rate control management, then the NICE CKS guidelines is pretty clear. So there are two options early on, a beta blocker, but not Sotolol, which is why this would be the answer, or a rate-limiting calcium channel blocker, such as diltiazem or verapamil. Now, we talked about digoxin. So digoxin can be used as first-line monotherapy for rate control management if someone has non-paroxysmal AF and they have a sedentary lifestyle. So if you get these kind of things popping up in a question and digoxin is an answer, don't just disregard it because your brain is remembered as either a beta blocker or a rate limit and calcium channel blocker. That should be there in your mind as well. So that's monotherapy first line. If that's not working, then you double up. So you go for dual therapy, um, a combination of any of these three things, beta blocker, tiltiazem, or digoxin. Now, obviously, if you're going to start to think about beta blockers plus diltiazem, then that should be ringing your bell in terms of um, safety and therefore you should be getting on cardiology advice but just remember these three in terms of step two dual therapy and then if you're still not winning then they should see cardiology within four weeks time so pretty quickly so monotherapy line one dual therapy line two cardiology within four weeks line three when it comes to atrial fibrillation management so you can see the only one that doesn't fit here least likely as a first bit to spot from his technique um, you might have got down to to, to a variety of two variations and then some of it obviously some questions are going to be purely knowledge based and how in depth you need to know the guidelines and um, so hopefully that total law would stand out as something that you couldn't use this kind of stuff is all covered um, alongside all the other chronic conditions that you need to know inside out for akt in our akt clinical Kramer online course um, still time to make full use of this it's a pretty long course nine hours but you could probably watch it two or three times um, if you wanted to before the exam coming up uh, if you do an exam later on, then you've got longer options as well. I was up to 12 months, not up to six. Um, nine hours, and we break it down to chapters. Cardiology is one of the biggest chapters because of all the, the chronic diseases that we need to know from cardiology, but lots of other big chapters as well, respiratory and GI, and um, plenty of information in there for, for you to get into your mind before the AKT exam. Make sure you use the coupon of, as always, Aurora Video 10 for a 10% discount. Loads and loads of you have used this over the last 20 odd days of watching these videos. So I'm really glad that you're taking full use of the coupon um, and you get full PDF packages as well. So when you purchase it, just send us an email and we'll send you out the full PDF slide package that you can print, make notes on, go through in detail, um, etc. But hopefully if you've got this already, you're making full use of it. If you haven't, hopefully you can still make some value of it in the last three or four days before the exam but atrial fibrillation know it inside out know those other chronic diseases make sure you're on top of those and um, we've covered quite a few already in the 30-day challenge we've got plenty more on youtube that you can watch back as well otherwise keep going keep pushing not long to go now we'll see you tomorrow campus will pass